Greetings from my bedroom. <laughs> well, 100 subscribers. This is certainly nice to see. Whether you came before I started making videos and was popular thanks to the huge amount of comments on YouTube I made over the years, if you're a fan of Gran Turismo content and love evolution videos I create, or if you found me thanks to the SSR 11 post that just so happens to be in BK4's playlist, thank you. I still have plans beyond Gran Turismo on this channel, but as a celebration for this milestone, I'm going to give you a different type of video that actually has effort. I'm going to be counting down my top 10 favorite cars from Gran Turismo 1, one of my favorite games ever made. I have two rules for this list. I'm ranking how much I love these cars as far as driving them in this game specifically, because there are times where I love driving cars that I normally don't care about, and vice versa, and it varies from game to game. And also, one car per lineage. The reason why is so that the list is more interesting and doesn't fill up with many cars with the same name and or history. So, for example, out of the Sylvia S13, S14, 180SX, S14LM, and Celady, I can only pick one out of all of them. What you're seeing right now are the honorable mentions for my list. With that out of the way, let's get down to said list. Normally the Honda Civic is one of those cars where I'm like, yeah, it's pretty nice. I get why it's very popular, especially the Type R cars, but for me, there are other Hondas in which I prefer. In Gran Turismo 1, however, this is an incredibly useful tool, in two different ways. In simulation mode, this is a very good car to start the game with. Many people will say the 88 Supra and FC RX-7 are the best starter cars in a game, but I personally like to start with this one because you can use this in more events at the beginning of the game, in particular the FF and Lightweight Challenges. But that's not why I love this car so much in GT1. That would be its performance in arcade mode. As any fellow GT player will attest to, this is the best car in C-Class, surprisingly better than the Mazda Roadster cars. It's actually incredible how dominant this car is in a class. You can take this through corners with ease and it has great acceleration thanks to its FF layout. Plus, this is my favorite Civic if we're just talking visuals. Not many people give this particular Civic much attention, but in GT1, at least it's a very good car and I have lots of fond memories using it to dominate in arcade mode, hence why it's number 10. This is one of the cars that has really grown on me over time. I knew it was a good race car, but having one of the best power to rate ratios out of every race car in the game, on top of being purchasable in the dealership, certainly caught my attention. Visually, I love the RX-7 race car. I always imagined it having similar visual styling cues to a rocket ship, mostly because of how cool the visual style looks. It looks like no other RX-7 ever made, and part of the reason why is because the RX-7 it's based off is very unknown, the 15th anniversary edition. Performance-wise, this also goes like a rocket ship. It has what you would expect from an RX-7, with its very responsive handling. It's great for every event in the game it's capable for, including the max speed challenge if you increase the gear ratios. It's also interesting that the RX-7 A-Spec LM Edition, the more touring car looking version, doesn't have as impressive specs as this car, but can it just have as good performance as this one? I still prefer this one though just because of the looks, but both are still fantastic. Not the first choice of super most people would go for I'd imagine. Of course the RZ is legendary, and the same goes for the Castrol Supra GT, especially in that sexy black livery. In fact, the 95 Supra, when tuned properly, is actually the fastest car in the game around test course. But this one is more special to me, despite it actually being worse in some ways. This is easily the hardest car to get in Gran Turismo 1, because you have to gold all the A licenses. And although you may think golding IA in this game is harder, trust me, the A licenses are brutal especially A1, A3, and A4. So that makes this car much more special once you earn it. Also helping is that visual upgrade. Look at it! The black vents of this hood are insane! I think this is an awesome looking Supra. But as I mentioned earlier, even stock, it's not as fast as the regular car. In game, it may say has more horsepower, but as we should know by now, the gentleman's rules for Japanese cars was cheated, and it actually produces less horsepower. And fully tuned, it's also not as powerful, typical of tuner cars. But other than that, it's pretty much what you expect from a Supra. It's very good all around. But again, it's that speciality factor that makes me love this car so much.
Speaking of very special cards that's not as good as the original, this is undeniably the poster boy of this category. This is the first card you'll see at the beginning of the intro and the last card you see in the endgame credits. So for us Grand Tristan 1 fans, this holds a special place in our hearts as the most exotic looking skylight of the 90s. Except it's not as good as one would hope. For a car where only one version of this exists and looks like a skyline turned into a supercar, it can be disappointing to see that it's not as powerful nor as light as a standard R33 Skyline GTR. Regardless of that, however, I still adore driving this car in GT1. There's just something so special about driving a crazy looking skyline against the rest of the cars, which at most look like the standard JDM fare. I'm also a big fan of the racing modifications in black. I like it way more than the actual skyline race car in the game. It's not as nimble through corners as expected, but it's still massive fun and competitive. In Gran Turismo 2, that racing modification got replaced by the real one, which is disappointing but understandable, considering that the Kerr and Zexel skyline race cars are in the game. Overall, the Nismo GTR LM road car is certainly one of the biggest standouts of the game, and in a good way. One of the best cars in the game for sure, weighing in at exactly 900 kilos and putting out a respectable 581 horsepower, this has the highest power to rate ratio out of every car in the game. That has realistic specs. Much like the RX-7 earlier, this has amazing straight line speed and excellent handling to annihilate the competition. This is much better though. In fact, when considering stock settings, I consider this to be their best race car in the game. Decrease the dampers on the copperhead though and we'll be talking a different story. I also love the fact that we even got a special TVR race car in the game, as TVR in and of itself is a surprising choice of manufacturer to represent in Grand Turismo 1. Everyone knows Toyota, Chevrolet, Nissan, Aston Martin, but I suspect most people who knew about TVR before they played GT1 when it was released was rare, especially here in North America. Would a specialized Aston Martin DB7 LM race car make more sense? Maybe, but I highly doubt it will be as good as this one considering its TVR lightweight tradition. The only problem I have with this car is that while the visuals are neat, being based on the Subaru GT driven by Mark Hales, it's pretty much the exact same as the racing modifications for the normal Subaru, which I find disappointing. Other than that, however, not much else to complain. This is fantastic in every sense of the word. I love the Corvette in general. My favorite overall is the C6 Z06, but this and the C4 Grand Sport ain't far off, and in fact, it was painful for me to leave off the Grand Sport. I'm not the biggest fan of the C4, but having it in blue with that large stripe gives it so much more character. But ultimately, I had to go with the 427, one of only two arcade mode exclusive cars in the game, alongside the NB MX-5. Immediately, this car stands out for a couple of reasons. It's the oldest car in the game, predating its closest competitor by over 15 years. It's also very, very quick. The top speed is trash, not gonna lie. But it's not surprising considering that classic American cars don't have very good transmissions in the first place. But at the same time, I love that they made it that way. The fast gear changes give the game a very different feel compared to the standard, smoother accelerations. If this was a newer Gran Turismo, it would be very common. But here, there's nothing else like it and it's fantastic. And yeah, they may give this car a very low handling score, but don't be fooled. This car can still be very dominant in arcade mode racing. In fact, if you encounter the AI of this car, it will always be restricted to 5th place because it's that good. The uniqueness of this car combined with the fantastic performance in arcade mode guaranteed it a top 5 spot, even though it's not purchasable in simulation mode. Okay, this is definitely going to be the most controversial choice. Whenever GT fans think of the FTO, the first thing that comes to their mind is the FTO LM race car, arguably the most popular race car in the game for its brutal launch off the line and very forgiving handling. It's so popular that every subsequent FTO race car in Gran Turismo is widely loved across all games. And I'm picking the standard FTO from my list, the standard front wheel drive sports car that nobody really cares about in my top 5. That is about as far away as the popular opinion as you can get on this list. Well, sorry to FTO race car fans, but I honestly find that car overrated. And I just prefer driving this FTO fully tuned and with racing modifications added. This car has really grown on me to the point where it's become my favorite Mitsubishi and my favorite front wheel drive car. 
It's one of those cards that doesn't get a lot of exposure due to other front wheel drive cards like the Integra being more legendary, but reality is, the GP version R is just as fast and as capable as the competition. That can be clearly seen with just how tremendous this car is in events that it's allowed. In the FFN lightweight challenges, this car dominates the battlefield. The handling is amazing. You can toss this car through corners like no tomorrow. It's to the point where it can even win events against higher competition. The same could be said with the other cars in the game this type when you tune them right, but this is a king of all of them. Plus, I think this is a great looking sports car. Definitely an underrated classic. What happens when you take a pretty decent front-engine, front-wheel drive sports car and turn it into a mid-engine, rear-wheel drive beast of a race car? You get this incredible machine. Seriously, drivetrain swaps of this type is incredibly rare in Gran Turismo, but it's just so f***ing awesome when it happens. I love this car. I love the way it looks in red. I love the sound. I love the small size compared to the rest of the race cars in the game. I love its very fast and focused handling. I love that it's less than 900 kilos, and most of all, I love that they gave it a drivetrain swap this crazy! Sure, it's not among the best that the game has to offer. The launch of the line is surprisingly not that great, and its mid-engine layout means that it doesn't have as much events to partake in as others, since there's no mid-engine layout like future GT titles. But I don't care in the slightest. What they did to this car will always have my respect. This is very high praise coming from me, considering that I'm not a huge fan of the Dell Soul in general. I even tried to recreate delivery on GT Sport on the Peugeot RCZ Group 3 race car because that car essentially did the same thing. It's a bad livery. Don't use it, please. Now, I won't go over much detail as to why this car rightfully earns a spot in my favorites list, as I already covered why in another video on another channel, which you can check out by clicking here. But to give you the pure essentials, the Impreza is my favorite JDM car, the fact that this pulls off 575 horsepower for an Impreza is insane, and the Group B speed combined with the WRC handling makes this my favorite handling car in the game. This is why the FTO race car is overrated in my opinion. I simply think that in terms of four-wheel drive cars, this is better across the board, even with a stock transmission with its poor top speed. It's also worth mentioning that I also really love the Impreza sedan in this game as well. One of my favorite things to do in this game is take the Impreza in arcade mode around Autumn Ring. It's literally like playing a WRC game in Fast Forward x 3, but as much as I love doing that, I just slightly prefer this rally car, and it really is one of my all-time favorites in Gran Turismo. If you didn't see this coming, shame on you. Do you see this? Do you see this? This should give you all the evidence I need to justify this placing. This is my favorite car of all time. And this particular version of the Viper is my favorite car in the entire Gran Turismo franchise. It has stayed that way ever since I was a wee little baby. There isn't a single thing I dislike about this car. The looks, especially in blue with white stripes, 10 out of 10. The performance, both stock and fully tuned, 10 out of 10. The versatility in both simulation and arcade mode, 10 out of 10. The nostalgia, holy f I even love the sound of this car even though it's not accurate at all. I use this car all the time in this game. Grinding for credits in the normal car cup event. Racing against faster AI in its racing form in the endurance races. Getting better at lap times in the time trials. Just messing with this car event. It really pained me that this 1997 version of the Viper GTS wasn't carried over, and likely won't ever come back. The livery editor in sport is awesome, but this is more raw and more fun. It's the one car I want to save up for in real life. Because it's very desirable, amazing and nostalgic to own, easy to repair, very fast for its price, and so, so beautiful. It's just, it's truly astonishing how much I love the Dodge Viper GTS and it rightfully earns this spot as my favorite car in Gran Turismo. And so that does it for my list. If you like this video and are new to this channel, be sure to check out the series I worked on called The Evolution of Cars in Gran Turismo, where I showcase nostalgic footage of cars starting from Gran Turismo 1 to 4 and ending in sport and seeing how much each car has evolved. Currently, I did over 25 cars from JDM to Lancias to American Sports. I would also like to know, what are your favorite cars in Gran Turismo 1? Let me know in the comments. But for now, this is Nessa Pajama saying, Fluffy Pillows.